Hi right, guys, Tim in here. It was suggested to me in regards to my LAG lens assisted generator that um, transistor might have been altering the timing, making it run better. How that came about, I'm not quite sure, but the suggestion I had from one of the guys on our forum was to change it to a read switch motor so the timing could not be altered or any aspects of the motor itself so what I've done set up a little read switch here which is fixed that's going to stay how it was now because it's only a small read switch and wouldn't carry the current for the run coils I'm triggering a 12 volt relay with that read switch to drive the run coils, get the amps through. You can see it's a 12 volt relay, a light relay out of a car. The bad thing about using this is it draws an additional 29 milliamps at 12.5 volts current. So if we had a decent sized read switch we could eliminate that. The good part about having that is I can now catch the back EMF off of it and charge this battery with it and the back EMF from the run coils will be charging this battery. Um, that's their voltages at the moment. Here are our two trigger wires that of course used to go to the transistor no longer being used and as per usual generator through the voltage doubler and we're keeping the same load which is that light now because I have no transistor I had no way of getting the motor to run um, at its best without shifting the reed switch which I didn't want to do so in between the reed switch I've put a pot and then out of the pot we're going to the relay now but adjusting the pot I can adjust how hard the relay comes on without shifting the reed switch but as it turns out the machine still does all the adjusting by itself so I've got the reed switch, uh, the pot, sorry, set. So this thing's running the best it can, using the least amount of current, uh, with the most amount of RPMs. Now, the battery charging side, I'm not really worried about. All I wanted was a pulse motor, and a very simple pulse motor to see if my design was going to work which you would have seen with the transistor that it worked quite fine but we are um, to eliminate any doubt we are going to a reed switch fired system and like I said the reed switch will not be moved the pot I've drawn a black line on so you can see that will not be moved either we'll be running out of our power supply there'll be no voltage drops or anything while we're doing the test it will remain the same and of course we'll be able to see our current draw I've managed to fix the reading on the current draw it had a um, dry joint across one of the shunts on the relays so that's now reading within one milliamp so that's all good that's also got some decent sized capacitors in it um, to keep the milliamp reading very smooth if I try and use one of these to measure the current it jumps all over the place because it's only going to be spinning fairly slow this time um, last time you would have seen I was running at 20 volts and I only had this 12 volt relay so I've had to drop it down to 12.5 volts so as I don't taste my relay um, so that's what we're going to be doing the test on is 12.5 volts so I removed two of the magnets out of the rotor um, because they were two of the opposite polarity with the transistor and the trigger wires 
that sorted itself out as to end one fire. Uh, of course with your north going past the coil it would fire just as the magnet was passing the core and with the south it would fire just as the magnet was approaching the core but because we've got a reed switch in a fixed position it'll fire just after the magnet's passing the core on one and also on the next one as well which actually wants to pull the rotor back to the middle of the core so I had to take them two out so we're minus two magnets also minus eight volts so it's going to go a bit slower but the effect will be the same so what we'll do now so we'll plug her in and then we'll start her up as you can hear the little relays clicking along nicely won't have to do any RPM testing today because you'll hear that start to click faster anyway But like I said, it takes a bit of a, um, a bit of time to build up speed. So we'll let it build up to where it's happy. Like I said, I've got a little set that's at its optimum performance at the moment. At least the amount of current draw out. Now 150 milliamps, that's uh, 12.5 volts. With those tiny little magnets is quite good, um, especially when you take into account this is chewing up 29 milliamps of that 150. But we can leave that into the test anyway. Um, our cat voltage, 6.9 volts in the cat. Of course, it's not hooked up yet, so we're not drawing anything out of the cat. So that seems to be sitting pretty happy there now. Now the only thing that does happen is because we don't have the transistor to automatically drop the voltage down or the uh, current going to the run coils down automatically. Um, the amps will jump up but as the rotor starts to speed up, they will start to come back down. Hopefully. So right, we're sitting pretty good there. 12.5 volts, 150 milliamps, and it seems to have settled. You can hear by the rotor or by the relay. Sorry, going away quite nicely. It's only two pulses per revolution because we only got two magnets. So, like I said, everything's going to stay. As it is, nothing will be changed. So now we're going to hook on the generator. As you can see, start generating our power. As you can hear, the rotor starting to speed up. Now, like I said, the amps go high, but as it speeds up, the amps start to come back down. We'll just let that run, build up speed. That's our voltage and our amperage that we're putting into that set load, which is our nice bright LED there. Load is starting to pick up speed. Like I said, this is slow. I've only got two really small magnets in it. And we've dropped the voltage down to 12.5 from 20. Oh, look at that. Same as what we started with. As you can see, the pot has not been adjusted. It's actually better. We can actually wind that down now and draw less current and still get power out with higher RPM. So there you go. Once again we're drawing 12.5 volts at 150 milliamps. 
Well, to feed this thing here, uh, that would be actually using more now that it's firing a lot more time. But without the generator hooked up, it's using 29 milliamps of its own. We could get rid of that if we have a decent size re-switch. But I've only got the little one, and it will not pass enough current into the coils without posting it. So there you go. 12.5, 150 milliamps, exactly the same as we started out with. The rotor speed, and as you can tell by the amount of clicks that that's now doing, has picked up. And now we're producing, what would that be, just on half a lot of power going into our light here. Oh, and the other good thing is, um, like I said, we're catching the back EMF from there. These two neons I've got here are 240 volt neons. Um, that's what's readily available here in Australia because that's our normal voltage supply here in Australia. So this is the back EMF from our little relay, which I'm quite surprised it even lights that up at all. And of course this one here on the back is from our own coils. So we're happily charging two batteries now. We've also produced that amount of uh, watts into a voltage doubler that we're driving our load with and we're doing all that for absolutely no extra cost than what it took to run this thing in the first place. So there you go. Um, I guess that was pretty much well for the experts out there that thought that it was all happening in the transistor, changing everything within the motor. Now everything is set, nothing can change and no rise in power consumption once we hook up the generator. Okay, hope you enjoy and we'll see you next video. Cheers from the Tin Men.